In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let's take a moment to call to mind our sins, allow ourselves to be embraced by the love of a compassionate God, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate word and sacrament. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Judges. All the citizens of Shechem and all Beth Milo came together and proceeded to make Abimelech king by the terebinth at the memorial pillar in Shechem. When this was reported to him, Jotham went to the top of Mount Gerizim and, standing there, cried out to them in a loud voice, Hear me, citizens of Shechem, that God may then hear you. Once, the trees went to anoint a king over themselves. So they said to the olive tree, reign over us. But the olive tree answered them, must I give up my rich oil whereby men and gods are honored and go to wave over the trees? Then the trees said to the fig tree, come, you reign over us. But the fig tree answered them, must I give up my sweetness and my good fruit and go to wave over the trees. Then the trees said to the vine, Come, you, and reign over us. But the vine answered to them, Must I give up my wine that cheers gods and men, and go to wave over the trees? Then all the trees said to the buckthorn, Come, you reign over us. But the buckthorn replied to the trees, if you wish to anoint me king over you in good faith, come and take refuge in my shadow. Otherwise, let fire come from the buckthorn and devour the cedars of Lebanon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. O oh Lord, in your strength the king is glad. In your victory, how greatly he rejoices. You have granted him his heart's desire. You refuse not the wish of his lips. Lord, in your strength the king is glad. For you welcomed him with goodly blessings. You place on his head a crown of pure gold. He asked life of you, and you gave him length of days forever and ever. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. Great is his glory in your victory. Majesty and splendor you conferred upon him. You made him a blessing forever. You gladdened him with the joy of your face. Lord, in your strength, the king is glad. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus told his disciples this parable. 
The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into the vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you too, go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again around noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, he found others standing around and said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you too, go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner saying, these last ones worked only an hour and you have made them equal to us who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to them in reply, my friend, I'm not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. There is a literary device called framing, and in homiletics class, they always warn the preacher not to use it, but that is to begin with something that you end with, so that you closed off the argument by getting back to the beginning. And what that does, it closes off any further discussion, any further thought, any further reflection, any further anything. You just end the story. Well, that's actually what's happening in today's gospel text because just yesterday it ended, but many who are first will be last and the last will be first. And then comes today's uh, parable, which ends, the last will be first and the first will be last. So Jesus has framed the argument in today's uh, parable so that it cannot have any reflective meaning whatsoever. It is what it is and nothing more. Well then, what is it? Well, if you look at the history of humanity, what you discover is uh, that people are converting to uh, faith in God, faith in Jesus Christ, faith in faith, all at different times in their life. Are they gonna get a different reward because of that? There was a, a theory at one time that there were, there were different levels of heaven and that those people who converted at the last minute oh, just barely got in the door. And maybe once a month they'd actually get to see an angel. And the next level up would be a little better and a little better and a little better. And the people who converted first, they get, well, that's not what heaven is like. Jesus reminds us that there is only one reward in heaven, and that is heaven. What more can there be? Can God parcel himself out so that in our encounter in the kingdom, there can be less of God if we have less of our time spent devoted to God? Well, no. And so the great question that comes out of this is not what it means, but how do we accept it? Are we any better than these laborers who came for, uh, early in the morning and worked all day long and want more? More of what? Or are we content to let God be God and let God be generous as God is generous? Because if we stop and consider how generous God has been with any one of us, 
could he be any more generous to anyone else? And that's the reality of the relationship that we should have with God, is that we understand that he gives us everything we need so that we can have faith, faith in a kingdom where we will live forever. But then we have the reading from the book of the Judges. And we've been studying uh, uh, Old Testament history uh, for the last several weeks. And we got through the book of Genesis and we got through the book of Exodus and now we're into the period of the Judges because we want to get around to the, the period of the great kings. Well, here we can see that they have just made Abimelech the king. And uh, Prophet jo Jotham gets up there and he says, oh, wait a minute. Do you know what you've just done? Because up to that time, the Hebrews were content that God was their king. God who resided with them all through their, their 40 years in the desert as a pillar of flame by night and a pillar of smoke by day. That was to them adequate, plenty, more than enough. But suddenly they're surrounded by all these little tiny kingdoms. They all have a king and they're jealous they're envious and they've got to have a king and so they, they go out and elect one and Jotham wants to warn them that very often we don't uh, select our leaders or our leaders don't surface uh, from the cream of the crop uh, just look at uh, uh, the last century for it perhaps when we can be in touch with history and some of the people we've had for leaders. You know, we just, uh, this week, is the, the anniversary of the death of Idi Amin. Need I say more? Our mission of accompaniment went to Zimbabwe. Now, need I say any more than uh, the president for life of Zimbabwe? Some of us are old enough to remember vaguely World War II because our parents were in it? Can we say any more than, than the Buckthorn tree about Hitler, Mussolini, Tojo, all of those people who brought us World War II? Can we say that, uh, this, that North Korea is ruled by the cream of the crop? And we can go place after place, time after time, leader after leader, and see that they are not the cream of the crop. As a matter of fact, you'll see that on the op-ed page very often. They'll say people of true virtue don't like to run for office. They're like the olive tree. They have a gift or a talent over here, and that's where they want to use it. They're like the grapevine that brings comfort and, and, and ease to it, as it says in the text, to gods and man alike. And, and they don't want to waste that in government. And so what do we get? People with big egos. And so Jotham is warning the, the Hebrews, that's what you're going to get. And so now we can just you know kind of look ahead here to the, the kings of Israel. How many kings of Israel do you know by name? I'm going to guess you know two. David and his son Solomon. Who was the king before David? You may know that it was Saul because Saul had uh, uh, a lot of mental issues that that led him to be a kind of a goofy guy. Although he was anointed of God to be king, so we have to respect the fact that he was God's choice. But, we, you know, we know David and Solomon, and then we don't know the rest of the kings. Why not? Because they were the buckthorn tree. They weren't people of virtue. They were people who led Israel astray who allowed it to fall apart? Where are the famous 12 tribes that disappeared? That's the fault of a king. Where are they? And so when we even look at the history of Israel, Jotham is saying, this is what you, what you asked for. This is what you're going to get. 
you should have let God be your king. Well, the challenge then for us is not to say we want to uh, overturn our government and make God our president, but we do want to make God high in the hierarchy of our values. If we truly have faith and give our due honor to God, we will always look to the very best when we choose our leaders. If we truly are destined to be part of God's family, we will make sure that our leaders are also part of God's family. And so what Jotham is asking in the book of Judges with this little example he gives is to be faithful. That's the great thematic that's running through these several weeks in, the, in our study of sacred scripture on the weekdays is fidelity, faithfulness, putting God always first, and everything else will then fall into place. Let us raise our voices in prayer to the God who loves us enough to listen. And as always, let's first pray for the Universal Church, particularly for all those who are out on the forefront of evangelizing the world, that they will do so in a way that reveals the love, the compassion, the kindness, the mercy, and the salvation that God offers to the human race. We pray to the Lord. Let's pray for those who are the leaders of the nations of this great globe of ours, that they will conspire to work together to build peace, to bring relief to those who need it, and comfort to those who need to be comforted. We pray to the Lord. And let's pray as well for the people of Haiti that uh, uh, despite the tragedy of an earthquake and a tropical storm going through there, the, the relief that they need will be able to get to them we pray to the Lord. Let's pray for all those who are being victimized by terrible weather, whether it's fires in one place or floods in another, that God will remediate the weather so that these disasters can be abated, we pray to the Lord. And let's pray for the people of uh, uh, Afghanistan, that the new leadership there will live up to the promises we heard yesterday in their first press conference, we pray to the Lord. For a quick and final end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. And for the safety of our travelers from the parish who are uh, celebrating just about the end of their first week in Ireland, that they're having a great time and will bring back lots of good memories and no viruses, we pray to the Lord. O well, loving and eternal God, you are kind enough to listen to our prayers, and we know that you also love us enough to answer them in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this bread which we offer to you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual food. Lord, may the mingling of this water and wine make us partakers in your divinity as you humbled yourself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for it is through your goodness that we have this wine which we offer to you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us spiritual drink. Lord, be pleased with this sacrifice, which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my sins and cleanse me of all of my iniquities. Yeah. 
My sisters and brothers, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him with great goodness you form it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, we pray, these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, Daniel our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to our apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with those around us a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. You know, anytime I hear a car go by with the bass booming like we just heard going there, I call my broker and order more hearing aid stock. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration is ended. Let us go to love and serve the Lord.